Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time. We bless your name because you're a good God. You have never failed. Your promises will never fail. We thank you, Lord, because faith in our heart will link up us with the Almighty. When we have faith, we have all things that we may desire to have. And therefore, Lord, I pray that today you will give us real, living, saving, abiding, growing faith in Jesus' name. That our faith in you will bear fruit, will get results, will lead us to a deeper relationship with you. And lead other people also to a closer relationship with you in Jesus' name. We pray that the faith in our heart will pray, will sing, will rejoice, will live triumphantly in Jesus' name. Speak to our hearts now and help us, Lord, to plant our feet on the eternal rock that will never be moved. So that by faith we'll stand firm and steadfast till the very end in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight I want to talk to you on faith, but on a very special aspect of faith. In the past we've been talking about the power of faith. In the past we have spoken about the result or the reward of faith. In the past we've spoken about the characteristics and the definitions of faith. In the past we have talked about the possibilities of faith. In the past, we have talked about what faith can do in our lives, what faith can do spiritually, materially, what faith can do in the family, what faith can do for anyone that has faith. And we have spoken so much about Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 on the description or the definition or the illustration for faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You have not seen it. You have the evidence in your heart. That's faith. You are hoping for it, but you have the reality, the title deed, and the substance right in your possession. And you are joyful because of what you know you have. And because of what you know you are going to have. That's faith. It says in verse 2, by it the elders obtained a good report. Which means all the people we have read about in the Bible, if there is anything that marked them out in their own generation, it is the faith they had in God. You've heard about Daniel. You've heard about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You've heard about Abraham. All these people and many more people who could talk about in the Old Testament and when you come on to the New Testament as well, by it, by this faith, the elders obtained a good report in verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Many things they are connected with faith. Pleasing God. Coming unto God. Believing in God. Seeking the face of the Lord. Praying fervently and diligently before the Lord. And God rewards the people that pray in faith, that live by faith, that act by faith, that do everything they do, not on the basis of unbelief, but on the basis of their faith in God. Now today, I'm going to talk on the voice of faith. You know, faith has voice. Not only that, faith has the word that will be challenging the word that will keep a person alive even when everything around seems to be deadly. Faith is a glorious possession. On the other hand, unbelief is a deadly trait in man. You think about a person that has unbelief. He is not far from defeat. He is not far from destruction. He is not far from death. He is not far from darkness. Think about a person that has unbelief he may be very near the promised land he may never get in think about a man that has unbelief he may very he may get very near the possession of all good things but you know he may never taste it 
speak about a man that has unbelief he may even see it with his eyes and he may never be able, able to open his mouth and receive and possess and enjoy but when we have faith our faith will turn our mystery into joy it will translate us from darkness into light faith will change our destiny think about a man that has been going towards hell a sinner lost and done but then he comes to repent and he believes on the lord jesus christ he said i believe is my savior i believe is my redeemer i believe he takes away my sin i believe he forgives me i believe he's pleading for me before the father immediately that faith in christ will change its destiny and change its direction from going towards hell and place him in the way that leads to heaven on the other hand unbelief can turn our joy into sorrow unbelief can can turn dancing into mourning unbelief can separate us from god separate us from life and separate us from blessing saving faith or living faith has a voice that speaks to god in life and at the hour of death and even after death think about it when you have living faith dynamic faith growing faith abiding faith unshakable faith unwavering faith in the lord that faith will always be speaking you'll speak to yourself and encourage your heart you will speak to members of your family and lift them up from despondency into a joyful note into a joyful ground when you have faith in the lord you will speak to neighbors who might be crying who might be pitying you you will tell them oh yes the sun is still going to shine during the day this may be the night of affliction this may be the night of sorrow and sickness this may be the night of poverty and hunger and, and famine but i know that the morning of joy the morning of surplus and supply the morning of prosperity is going to come you know when you have a living dynamic abiding faith that faith will be speaking out any situation you find yourself faith will speak out and even at the hour of death at the hour of death you will say resurrection morning is coming you will say this is a glorious day the angels are coming and they're going to take me home you'll say i'm waiting to get my home in my father's house are many mansions you will say i'm going to a better country i'm going to a better place i am leaving the region of darkness and sorrow i'm leaving the region of suffering and disappointment i am going on to the other side even at the hour of death your faith will be speaking unto god saying oh lord i'm coming home oh lord i'm coming to rest oh lord i'm coming to see your face and even after you have died and you have gone when you're on your way in the great beyond beyond the valley beyond the river you'll be saying here am i now at the very gate i come to enter in and if there is anything anyone standing there that say no you cannot get it all you say my name is in the book of life and this is my place this is my eternal home i've been preparing to come to this place for a long long time and now this is my hour to enter in and if they say over there how do you know your name is in the book of life when you have not read what's in the book of life oh you say by faith i saw it by faith i knew it by faith i learned it by faith and the spirit of god is witnessing in my heart that my name is written there i have a possession and i have a mansion up on high open the gate and let me go in you see a person that has faith that faith will be speaking all the time i want you to look at acts chapter 7 acts chapter 7 reading from verse 55 but he being full of the holy ghost looked up steadfastly and saw the glory of god and jesus standing on the right hand of god remember this is talking about stephen when he was going to be chosen we are told about him that he was a man full of faith and now this is the hour of death and he said i told you faith will always speak out I told you faith will not be silent I told you faith will always be positive and he said behold I see the heavens open 
and the son of man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. These unbelieving Jews, they couldn't bear the voice of faith. The voice of faith was so strange to them. They closed their ears, they stopped their ears, and they ran after him, and they ran upon him, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, That's the voice of faith, saying, This is the voice of faith, saying, This is the hour of death, and faith will keep on talking. Before you die, faith will keep on talking. At the time of death, faith will keep on talking. It says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Wait a minute. It only says, he saw the Lord Jesus Christ standing. He didn't hear Jesus say anything. He didn't hear Jesus repeat anything. Just saw him standing. How did Stephen know that Jesus was not standing against him as a judge? That maybe I have said something wrong. Maybe I have done something wrong. Maybe these people that are stoning me, maybe after all they are right. Maybe I am a sinner after all. Maybe I didn't follow the voice of the Spirit after all. Maybe I said the right thing at the wrong time in the wrong place. And therefore Jesus is standing now as a judge wanting to judge me. How did you know that Jesus was not standing to judge him? By faith. By faith. And because of that faith, he said, Lord Jesus, you are my advocate. You are standing as my advocate. Lord Jesus, you are standing as my redeemer. Lord Jesus, you are standing as a great ambassador that will welcome me into the great beyond. Lord Jesus, you are standing as my beloved and my only beloved. When mother, father, friends, foes, when everybody forsakes me, then the Lord will take me up. Lord, you are standing as my shepherd. And you are standing to welcome me home. And take me in your bosom. And take me to reign with you. He knew that by faith. That's why he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down. Did I tell you? A faith will speak. Faith will pray. Faith will depend upon God. Faith will trust in God. It doesn't matter what is happening around you. They are throwing stones at you. They are cutting you in pieces. They are criticizing you. They are terrifying you. They are oppressing you. They are persecuting you. They are cheating you. Faith will kneel down and pray. Faith will speak to God in hope. And he cried aloud with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. You see the peace that comes because we have faith in God. Look at Hebrews chapter 11 and in verse 4. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Do you see that? He had been dead, but yet his faith kept on talking. His faith kept on speaking unto God. His faith kept on having fellowship with the Lord. Let me remind you again. Living faith, or saving faith, or dynamic faith, or abiding faith, or growing faith, scriptural faith has a voice that speaks to God in life. And at the hour of death, and even after death, unbelief makes people worry and fret. The unbelief will make you despondent when there are trials or persecution or trouble. You see what we say reveals either faith or unbelief. And it is what we say revealing faith or unbelief that will determine what we get, whether blessing or judgment. You see, some people say, uh, well, I never get healed. I never have my prayers answered. What you say will determine what you get. Other people say, I know even if it's delayed, I'm going to have it. I'm joyful. I know my Lord. My Lord will never disappoint me. Even if I get very near the brink of death, things are going to change. 
Even if everybody is hungry now, things are going to change. No work now, things are going to change. You see, that is a voice of faith. Before I go on with the voice of faith, let me try to clear up this. What happens when unbelief speaks? When a person has unbelief in the heart, and it is not just him that is talking, but the spirit of unbelief within him that is talking, what does he say? Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 11. When unbelief speaks, then he said unto me, Son of man, these are the bones, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our paths. That's unbelief talking. The Lord was sending Ezekiel to them that they will be revived, that they will be saved, that they will be gathered together, that they will become a mighty army before the Lord. But on the other hand, these people that God had a good intention about, a good plan upon their lives, they said, our bones are dried, our hope is lost, we will never be gathered together. We will never be saved. There is no hope. And there is no point in repenting. Because they said, God will never take them. They said they have gone so far, they will never be saved. You see, there are people like that today. They say, well, I've committed so many sins. Adultery, fornication, I've stolen, I've done this, I've done that. And when you tell them, come and be saved, oh, they say there is no point. I've gone so far. The Lord will never save me. And yet, you know, at that time, if they could see the mind of God, the mind of God is saying, come. I love you. I sent Jesus to die for you. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Jesus died for you. It is not his will that any of us shall be lost. And the backslider, you don't know how much God loves you. And you know, a backslider will be saying, well, the church has rejected me. And uh, brethren, they don't visit me. Nobody, I know I'm going to perish. I know they don't love me. I know I'm a bad fellow. I know I've gone so far. I know nobody has any confidence in me. And you know, at that time, the Father is looking out for them. And the great shepherd is seeking them, saying, Where is my lost sheep? Where is my lost coin? How can I find my lost boy? How can I find my lost daughter? I'm looking for him. The Lord is looking for you all the time. And even though you have been a backslider, you see, if you will allow the voice of faith to speak out, saying, I know I've gone far, but I'll come back home. I know that I've done things that are wrong, but God is a good God, and he has the power to change my life. I know I am weak, but he will make me strong. I know I've fallen over and over and over, but I'm still going to come back home. You see, when Jonah got to Nineveh, and he told them, you people, you have gone far. You people, you have sinned so terribly. You people, there is no hope for you. God has decided 40 days, joint judgment, final judgment is going to come upon you. What did they say? Did they say, well, there's no use trying. There's no use praying. There's no use repenting. Because when God has decided we're going to die, He's going to judge us. There is no hope. Therefore, we can never be saved. No. The voice of faith spoke through them. Spoke through the thing. The king and said, Everybody must come to the Lord, must repent and pray and even fast. Who knows? God may receive us back. That's the voice of faith. But you see, the children of Israel at this time, they said, there is no hope of salvation because they have gone so far. Sinner, change that voice. And you tell the Lord, I know I'm a sinner, but Christ will be my Savior. He died for me. And even though I am weak, I know that your grace will be sufficient for me. If I get saved, I know that I will not be able to keep myself in that saving grace of the Lord, but your hand will hold me. Your power will keep me. The same thing, backslider. Why are you losing hope? Eh, pastor did not ask of me. Pastor did not visit me. And the coordinator did not ask of me. Everybody has written me up. And they have said, I can never change. I will never turn. I will never repent. I will never be useful again. Okay, since they said I will never be useful, let me go my way. 
let me go my way which other way are you going god is calling for you jesus is looking for you he died for you and he's still pleading on your behalf even now change that voice of unbelief turn it to the voice of faith and say i know that he's still my redeemer i know he's still my savior if you will do that then you will repent then you will pray then you will plead you see let me show you this man his name eli and god sent a message to him and sometimes you know god in his love because he says he chastises the people that he loves in his love he will send warning in his love he will even speak about that warning he will say it in a language of judgment if a person has faith in god he will say i'm going to get to god he may chastise me he may scourge me he may punish me whatever he does i will stay very near him and i will keep on praying i will keep on praying the lashet or the scourge may be falling upon my back i will keep on praying persecution and trials and trouble may surround me i will keep on praying i may even suffer for the sins i've committed but i will keep on praying you see that's a person that has paid he says though he kills me though he scourges me though he chastises me though he rebukes me he will save me at last i will never leave him i will never leave him if the angels pull me away i'm going to cling to the lord if even god is saying there's no hope you go and you go and get lost i am going to keep on clinging unto god if i pray he doesn't answer i am going to pray again if i read the bible i don't understand i'm going to read it again if i come to church i do not feel the spirit of worship i'm going to come again if i cry and god doesn't wipe away the tears immediately i'm going to cry again if i seek the face of the lord and i do not find him i'm going to seek him again that's the voice of faith that's a person that will never give up he says things are bad but it'll be better he says my heart is dry but it will be fresh he says i feel i'm cut off from the lord but i'm going to be attached unto the lord i feel as if hell is certain but you know i'm going to get to heaven i will never give up i will never give up until i breathe my last like this i'm going to keep on seeking the face of the lord and look at my face very well i will get to heaven satan says i'll never make it but you know i'm going to make it satan says i've gone too far but i know that i'm going to be for the lord that is a voice of faith that will never give up but look at eli in first samuel chapter 3 first samuel chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 11 and samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the lord and samuel feared to show eli the vision god had said some hard things concerning eli and concerning his house then eli called samuel and said samuel my son and he answered here am i and he said what is the thing that the lord has said unto thee i pray thee hide it not from me god do so to thee and more also if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee and samuel told him every wit and hid nothing from him what did samuel say oh samuel said father eli god has said is going to bring judgment that your children your two sons they are not living right and you have not rebuked them and because of this god is angry and he says he's going to do something that the ears of the people will tingle now if a person has faith what will he do oh he will do what the people at nineveh did he will go to god and said god you are right i am wrong i am guilty i've been careless i've been negligent but god don't do like this god have mercy your mercy is everlasting and it's from generation to generation if a person has faith what will he do he's going to be pleading the promises of god and he's going to be clinging to god saying oh god i will never leave you oh god i will never leave you but what did eli say here is the voice of unbelief verse 18 samuel told him every witch and hid nothing from him and he said it is the lord let him do so let him do what seemeth him good it says no use praying god has decided 
No use calling upon the Lord. My sons are going to die. That's all right. That's all right. He is God. You can never change his mind. I'm a human being. I've served God the best I knew. And God said that the, what I've done is not enough in his sight. I've yielded all my life. I've been in the temple all the time. Now I'm an old man. And God says he has something against me. That's all right. That's all right. It's the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. Let me ask you a question, my brothers and sisters. What if the king of Nineveh and the people of Nineveh, when they had the judgment coming upon them, when Jonah said, 40 days and Nineveh shall be destroyed, what if they said, that's all right, it is the Lord, let him do what seemeth him good. You see, those people were even heathens and pagans. They did not have the knowledge of the Bible like Eli had. But he said, we will not give up like that. We're not going to allow Nineveh to be destroyed like that. We know we have sinned. Let every man come and repent and put away the violence of his hand. Maybe the Lord will have mercy and thank God, God had mercy. You know, God will have mercy. Always God will have mercy. Look up here. God will have mercy on you. Whatever you have done, however, you have, however far you have gone, you see God is a God of mercy. Don't you remember? Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary. He bore the load of your sin. Behold the Lamb of God who took away and taketh away the sins of the world. Is your sin heavy? Is your sin weighing you down? Is your conscience feeling guilty? Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the whole world. You see, when somebody has some belief, he will have despondency and carnality. Look at Genesis chapter 3, chapter 30. Genesis chapter 30, from verse 1. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Ah, uh ah, -uh. look at this. A person that married unto Jacob. And Jacob had the promise of God upon his life. And he received the promise from Isaac. The promise of Abraham. And because there has been some delay. Rachel had no children. And because of this. Sorrow came in. Despondency came in. And said give me children or else I die. You know that's how some people behave. Well we visited hospital. The doctors have advised. They have told us to come for treatment. They have done this and they have done that. And I have prayed. And I have sent prayer requests. And uh, so and so has prayed for me. And I have fasted sometimes. And yet there is no pregnancy. And yet there is no child. Well, if I don't have child, it's better that, that I die. Why are you talking like that? Why are you talking like that? Do you know the promise of God? Do you know the plan of God for your life? Why are you acting as if you are totally despondent and you are giving up? That's the voice of unbelief talking. You see, when a person says, give me job or else I die. Give me children or else I die. Give me promotion or else I die. Give me new clothes or else I die. Give me husband now, now, this month. If I don't get husband now, now, else I die. Give me wife or else I die. What are you talking what is speaking within you? Is that faith or unbelief? That's unbelief. Give me children or else I die. It's the language of unbelief. It's the language of somebody that is fed up. That cannot continue with God again. That cannot wait upon the Lord again. Keep on waiting. The Lord is going to do it. Keep on waiting. The Lord is going to perform the miracle. Keep on waiting. The Lord will never disappoint any one of us in Jesus name. Now let me switch over from the negative let me go to the positive. Let me now talk about the sweet voice of faith. You see, faith has a sweet voice that can sing in the night. You remember Silas and Paul? You know what they did? They sang in the night. How could they sing in the night? That's faith. Faith has a sweet voice singing in the night. And you know when faith begins to sing, the foundations of the prison house will be shaken. When faith begins to sing with a sweet voice, 
heavens will open and everyone's bands will be loosed. Faith sees the star of hope in the night when he cannot see the sunshine of God's face. You see, in the night when you look up, you don't see the sun, but you can see the stars. And it's the star of hope in the night of adversity, in the night of persecution, in the night when friends are forsaking you, in the night when, in the night when it appears there is no hope. The faith you have in your heart can see the star there, the star of hope, saying, it will be well in the morning. Faith can shout with the voice of victory and triumph, while Jericho walls seem impregnable. Those Jericho walls may still be there. Faith will never fear. Faith will never be timid. Faith will never give up. Faith will walk around the first day. Nothing has happened. Faith will walk around again the second day. Nothing has happened. Faith will walk around again the third day. Nothing has happened. Faith will walk around again the fourth day. Nothing has happened. Faith will walk around again the fifth day. Nothing has happened. Faith will go the extra mile and walk around on the sixth day. Nothing has happened. Faith is still going to walk around on the seventh day. And at that seventh time, faith is going to shout with the voice of victory and triumph. Even when it appears nothing ever will happen because nothing has ever happened, something is going to happen. If you will pray tonight, something will happen. If you will have the voice of faith to shout the victory and triumph tonight, something is going to happen. If you will look up to God tonight again, something is going to happen. I prayed before, pray again. I've been asking before, ask again. I've been pleading before, plead again. I've been going around the Jericho walls before, go out again. I've been telling the Lord, do this and do this. Ask again. The Lord will do it. You see, faith will prophesy of eternal life while physical death is closed by the door. You see this faith I'm talking about. When physical death is near and the man can see physical death coming and approaching right at the door, faith will open its mouth and begin to prophesy of eternal life, of spiritual life, of life that will never end. Faith expresses assurance to defeat the enemy even when the man has no weapon to fight the enemy look at david before goliath goliath had all the ammo all the weapon and yet david had nothing but a little five little stones and yet faith began to prophesy assuredly that he was going to defeat the man that has all the weapons when he had no weapon at all faith speaks positively Every time, whatever may be surrounding you, everything surrounding you may be negative and dark and gloomy, but faith will always be speaking positively, saying, there's no problem. God is still on the throne. His promises will never fail. Christ is mine. He will never leave me. I'm telling you that faith will rejoice and celebrate the resurrection morning in the night of death. The night of death has come. What will faith do? Faith will begin to dance and rejoice and celebrate the resurrection morning. You see, faith always speaks with a quickening voice. Let me show you something. Look at Job chapter 19. Job chapter 19. Look at everything surrounding Job at this time. And yet learn a lesson from Job. And see the way he had the voice of faith speaking in him. Look at Job chapter 19 from verse 1. And Job answered and said, How long will ye bear my soul and break me in pieces with words? Verse 7. Behold, I cry out of wrong, but I am not heard. I cry aloud, but there is no judgment. Look at verse 9. He has stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from mine head. You hear Job? He said, look at everything surrounding me. Everything surrounding me is negative. It's dark. It's gloomy. He said, I've been stripped of my former glory. My former glory, my joy, my pleasure, my delight has been taken away from me. Even the crown has been taken away from my head. Look at verse 11. He has also kindled his wrath against me. And he counted me unto him as one of his enemies. Verse 14. My king's folk have failed, and my familiar friends have forgotten me. Look at verse 17. My breath is strange to my wife, 
though I entreated for the children's sake of my own body. Look at verse 19. All my inward friends abhorred me, and they whom I have loved are turned against me. Those were the conditions all around Job. What, what did he say? Look at verse 25. He said, ah, don't think I'm giving up. He said, don't think I'm discouraged. He said, even though I told you now what is all around me, don't think I'm going to die like this, for I know that my Redeemer lives. That's faith. That's a voice of faith. That's a person that is going to sing in the night. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold and not another, though my rays con be consumed within me. You see, that is a voice of faith. And if you can speak like that tonight, if you can call upon the Lord like that tonight, your night will turn to day. Your sorrow will turn into joy. Do you know that your Redeemer lives? If you know that your Redeemer is alive, why are you despondent? Why are you dragging your feet? Why are you sorrowful? Why are you acting as if you don't have a Savior? Why are you acting as if God is not on the throne? Why are you acting as if you are totally despondent and there is no hope at all? Don't you have living faith? Don't you have abiding faith? Don't you trust in God? Don't you trust in the promises of God? Doesn't your faith speak positively? Those who speak of death may die. But those who speak of death speak of life and live. Speak of life and live. Speak of Christ and be saved. Speak of good things and let the promises of God be yes and amen in your life. I want you to rise up on your feet. I want you to rise up on your feet and say, Lord, I believe in God. I believe in God. Dry your tears. Take away all the sorrow. Take away all the despondency and take away all the unbelief. And speak in faith and say, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that my Redeemer liveth. He is mine. I am his. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He is going to care for me. He is going to answer my prayer. Arise and pray. Arise and pray. And talk unto the Lord. And talk for the confidence of a child of God. If you are a sinner, come home. The Lord has been waiting for you for a long time. If you are a backslider, come home. The Lord loves you more than you can think. More than you are willing to believe. Come home, the Lord has been waiting for you for a long time. If you have any problem, come. The Lord is still on the throne. I know that my Redeemer liveth. If you know that Christ is still alive, God is still alive, and the promises will never fail, then talk to the Lord in prayer. And let mighty miracles take place in your life, even right now tonight. 